helping us get to this point. <clears throat> and before I introduce our new head football coach, I'd like to take a, a moment and thank some very important people. First of all, I'd like to thank Chancellor Victor Boschini, TC Board of Trustee Chairman Mark Johnson, Athletics Committee Chairman Eddie Clark, and the entire TCU Board of Trustees for their support throughout this entire process. I'm trying to look you all in the eye. Thank you for being here. Um, we are blessed with tremendous leadership at this university and never was that more evident and on display than over this past month. So I thank you sincerely. Next, I would like to thank our external search firm, Turnkey and Chad Chatlos for their great work. And I'd like to thank our internal search committee here on campus for assisting me of Rhonda Hatcher, Eddie Clark, LaDainian Tomlinson, Brad Cunningham, Hunter Ennis, and Mike Singfield. This group invested a lot of hours ensuring we conducted a thorough and detailed vetting process. And while ultimately it is my responsibility to make this decision, we'd all had come to the same conclusion that we wanted Coach Dykes to lead this football program going forward. A big thank you to the entire TCU athletic staff and our new staff, uh, many of whom are here today. I'm looking at you upstairs. Um, I have the best staff in the country and certainly the best staff that any athletics director could ask for. I am incredibly grateful for the way they've handled this transition and have supported one another and supported me. On a personal note, I want to thank my family, especially my wife, Nicole, who's here with us today. Uh, I've been pulled away from home much more than usual lately, and I appreciate your patience and understanding. I love you. Uh, finally, I'd like to thank Coach Gary Patterson and all of the TCU coaches and staff that worked for him during his tenure. And I'd especially like to thank all of the players, all of the TCU former football student athletes that played for Coach Patterson. Frankly, we would not be standing here today in this beautiful Legends Club if it were not for their collective efforts in elevating this program. And I'm positive it's because of them we were able to attract a coach and staff of this caliber we're bringing on board. A few. A few comments about the search process, and then I'm going to turn it over to our new coach. When we started the search in early November, we laid out some criteria that we were looking for in an ideal candidate. One, we were looking for candidates with head coaching experience and proven success. Two, someone with a detailed plan to recruit the state of Texas with particular emphasis on Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex. Three, someone who could present a comprehensive and holistic strength and conditioning in the injury prevention plan. Four, someone who is adept in navigating the new realities in college athletics, like the transfer portal, name, image, likeness. And five, someone who had a history of building great team culture and would invest in our student athletes, in their futures and in their development on and off the field. Finally, and ultimately, someone who could help us compete for and win championships here at TCU. We were fortunate to generate a lot of interest from many great candidates, and many of those candidates did possess these qualities. But in Sonny Dykes, we found someone who not only met every one of those desired criteria, he was far and away the best fit for TCU and for this university. TCU football in this university, excuse me. And what you will find in Coach Dykes is not only that he's a great coach, a great recruiter, runs a great program, he's a great person. You'll find he's a tremendous husband, a loving father, friend to many, many in this room. He's approachable, he's funny, he's an outstanding leader, and he's going to be a great mentor to the young man on this team. But he's also someone that we as a university will be proud to call our head coach for many reasons that have nothing to do with the game of football. The good news doesn't stop there with just Sonny. We're also fortunate to welcome his lovely wife, Kate, and their three children, Allie, Charlie, and Daniel. We're equally as excited to have you as new Horn Frogs as well. So welcome. And so now, the moment TCU fans everywhere have been waiting for, it's time to meet your newest Horn Frog. And judging by the response he got last night with the team when they met and from uh, recruits that we're hearing from already, it's safe to say there's great excitement about this man and his staff leading our program. So without further ado, it is my great honor to introduce our new Newest head football coach, our next head football coach, excuse me, Sonny Dykes. Come on up, Sonny.
more. Okay, good. One more? Sorry. Okay, awesome. Photo ops. <laughs> Well, wow. Uh, thank you all for being here. Just a fantastic crowd. Um, really, really appreciate the support. The, the welcome last night was, was overwhelming. Um, it was fantastic to have an opportunity to, to get around our players and to, to spend some time with them. Um, I want to thank some people as well. Um, thanks to Chancellor Boshimi uh, for, what, for having confidence in me and, and our program and what, we're, what we intend to do here at TCU. I uh, want to thank the board chairman, you know, Mark Johnson, for, what, uh, for having faith in us as well. I um, want to also thank Eddie Clark um, and the Athletics Council for what you guys have done. The search committee, I just want to thank the TCU community. You guys have been so fantastic. Uh, and the Horn Frog Nation uh, has, been, has been great. It's had a, I've had a, an opportunity to see many folks, talk to many folks, and just can't tell you how excited I am to get started. You know, this is, a, this is a fantastic place, and it's been a long process to get here. Uh, and it's taken a lot of hard work, a lot of dedication, uh, a lot of investment from a lot of different people to make TCU the special place that it is today. And so all of you play a big part in that. And so I just want to say thank you for doing that. You know, it's a real honor to me to have an opportunity to be here. Um, this is, um, I spent a year here in this program. I was blown away by the people that I met. I was blown away by the players that were on the roster. Uh, it was really um, an eye-opening experience for me just to see what kind of place this was. I always knew it was good looking out from the, from the outside in, but having a chance to be here for a year really opened my eyes to, to what an incredible place this is. So um, I, I just can't tell you how excited I am for this opportunity. You know, I think the thing that we've got to do here um, is and, and our goal from the very beginning is to, to play and, and win championships. You know, I talked to our players yesterday. That's our standard. Our standard is to, to compete for and win championships. And really, there's three steps, I believe, in order to do that. Uh, number one, and I think this is probably as important as any of them, you know, it's all about talent acquisition. And what does that mean? That means surrounding yourself with the best people you can. Um, we have an outstanding coaching staff, a really remarkable support staff, some people with incredible energy and vision. Uh, we're going to maximize every opportunity that TCU affords us. The second thing we've got to do is, is develop our players. That's going to be a big part of it, okay? Player development is so critical to building a college football program. And that all begins with strength and conditioning. We're really fortunate to have Kaz Kazadi here, who I think is the best strength and conditioning coach in college athletics. Kaz will get, get with our players and will build something uh, really special. Uh, and, and he does an outstanding job of doing that. So you guys will have an opportunity to get to know Kaz and see what he does for our program. And it's really, it's really uh, um, uh, there's many steps involved. He does many different things, not just making players bigger, stronger, and faster, but dealing with injury prevention, an emphasis on nutrition, um, an emphasis on mental training, and all those things that I think contribute to championship-level football programs. So we're... We're excited to have him here. His staff will hit the ground running uh, when our players report back in January, and I know we'll make some huge strides to get our guys ready for spring football. The third part of it, I think, is probably as important as any of the parts, is building a culture. I think that's what we have to do here at TCU. Players come and go, guys graduate, people move on, but the culture sustains itself. And the way you build a culture is by getting young people to be unselfish getting young people to realize that the team is bigger than the individual. And that's easier said than done. You know, in today's world, a lot of times people think it's all about them. And we intend to make sure that everybody knows it's all about us. And, and that's something that we'll talk about from the very beginning to the very end, and that'll be a big part of our success that we have. So it's a, this is a fantastic opportunity for me. I don't take it for granted. I can't tell you how excited I am. I want to thank my wife, Kate, and our family. I want to thank my sister, Bebe, and my brother, Rick, for being here. Uh, Kate's father, Joe, for being here. Uh, we've got a, a great group of friends uh, that are here that supported us every step of the way. I can't tell you how much that means to us personally. At the end of the day, it's really all about relationships. And we intend to build strong relationships with our student-athletes. One of the things that I believe that's incredibly important, and I talk to players 
yesterday about this. You know, this is their program. You know, this is the former players' program. This is the current players' program. We are here to serve those young people. We are here to enrich their lives. We are here to make sure they get a great education. When they leave here, they get a meaningful degree. When they leave here, they can go be great fathers, great husbands, and great leaders in the community. And I think that's something that we value very significantly and means an awful lot to us. But it's their program, and the sooner they take control of the program and take ownership in it, then the, the quicker we'll be successful. So I'm really, really fired up to be here. Can't wait to get started. We have a lot of positive momentum right now happening uh, within guys in our program right now, current players, also uh, recruiting. We certainly intend to hit the ground running. We've got a great staff uh, that, that's already done that. Uh, we surrounded ourselves with some guys that can, can build relationships with young people and help motivate them and help them get where they want to go in life. So that's why we're here. Uh, and we intend to, to be the, the Big 12 champion and to play for championships consistently. So again, I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. I'd also like to make sure that I thank Gary Patterson um, and, and what he has done for TCU. I think it's hard to put a value on what he's meant to this football program and this university, uh, the way he and Kelsey have um, you know, embraced the Fort Worth community uh, and they've done so much for so many people through the years, including myself. So I'd be remiss if I didn't thank him. And as Jeremiah said, none of this would be here without his hard work and dedication from he, he and his coaching staff. So thank you all for being here. Uh, look forward to, to hitting the, the field this fall. There'll be a lot of hard work before now and then, but we're excited to get started. I'll take questions. Thank you. Coach, uh, Drew Davison for Star Telegram. You kind of hit on it, but, you know, what, what would you tell fans you want TCU football to be? What sort of style? And, and do you feel like you talk about winning championships, I mean, as early as 2022, or do you feel like there's some more to do? Yeah, you know, you don't want to put pressure on me that much yet, you know. Um, <laughs> I haven't really got to know the players yet. Um, you know, look, I, I think here, here's the thing that, that is true, I think, at any level of football. Um, you know, all you have to do is look at the Big 12 right now, okay? The championship game is this Saturday, and it's between the two teams in the Big 12 that have the best two defenses, okay? When you look right now, Oklahoma State and Baylor are the best two defenses in this league. So if you want to win championships, especially in the Big 12, but really anywhere in football, you have to play defense. You have to play defense at a very, very high level. And so that's where it all begins. Um, you know what? We want our teams to play hard consistently. That's one of the things that I think we've always taken a tremendous amount of pride in, is that when our team takes the field, you know we're going to play hard, winning football, tough, physical, hard-nosed football for 60 minutes. You know, our guys won't give up um, no matter what's, what happens. Good things that happen, we'll keep our head down and keep playing. When bad things happen, we'll keep our head down and keep playing. Uh, so that's what I want our team to be known as, is a team that is going to show up, is going to play a physical brand of football, going to execute at a high level. And, and really, I want our guys to have fun. I want our guys to have fun playing for each other um, and enjoy the experience because, you know, it's really one of the most special things that you can do in your life is to be around teammates and sac make sacrifices for each other. And it just builds a bond that's so strong and lasts forever. So I want those guys to have a great experience here and, you know, and play championship-level football. Yes, sir. Coach, Jamie Plunkett, Frogs of War. Uh, you've already started to bring some assistants on board, still some key positions to fill. What's your timeline for filling out the rest of your staff? You know, it's, um, I'd like to have it done as quickly as possible. I think that's, you know, we've got seven or eight coaches that will hit the ground recruiting pretty quickly. Um, and, and that's obviously, we don't have much time between the early signing day. You know, I think we're 13 days, or excuse me, 15 days out. Uh, from the early signing period, so we have a lot of work to do between now and then. Um, and so that's going to be something that, that we've got to get done very quickly. Um, and so it's going to, you know, we've got we've to take advantage of every opportunity we, we have, get as many coaches as we can on the road, uh, in front of high school coaches, in front of players. Um, you know, the number one thing that you always want to do as well is, you know, in today's world, you have to recruit your current roster. 
you know, you have to start building relationships with, with those players that you have currently on your roster. You know, one of the things that we've talked about is trying to take the, the Christmas holidays to get into some of our current players' homes over the break, meet their parents, give them an opportunity to get to know me and my family uh, in a personal setting. Uh, that's something that we'll find time to try to do with our current student athletes is to, to, to spend some time just getting to know them. Um, but at the end of the day, it's really about finding the right people. That's going to be the most important thing. So, you know, I'm hoping it goes quickly, but at the end of the day, you know, finding, finding the right 10 full-time coaches and the, the support staff and the additional um, coaches that they need is going to be most important. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> All right, question was, when are we moving to Cowtown? Um, you know, I'm moving here today. <laughs> uh, the, rest of, the rest of the family, as, as quickly as possible. Yeah, you know, I think that's, you know, we're ready to, to, to dive into the community and to, to get to Fort Worth and to get to know people and start building relationships. And, you know, and my kids are ready to get to school and start making friends and, and getting to know folks. So as soon as possible. Coach Brian Estridge with the uh, Horn Frog Sports Network. Tell me, uh, you, you've coached outside of the state of Texas a long time. You coached in the state of Texas. The perception of TCU in the college football world, and how did that influence your decision on this job? You know, well, I think, I, look, I think anytime you have the kind of success that TCU's had, I mean, not, there's very few teams in the country that can say they've won a Rose Bowl. You know what I mean? And that's something that, that is part of this, this history. And it's a big deal, and um, and it's certainly not easy to do. And so, you know, I think as everybody knows, that changed everybody's perception from a national standpoint uh, of what TCU looked like and what the possibilities are and the capabilities. Um, you know, growing up in Texas, I, I always knew, you know, what this place could be. Um, there's very few places that have what this place has, okay? And that is top-down support from a chancellor level, to the athletic director level, to the board level, to trustee level, to, um, to alumni and donor level, uh, and you have a strong recruiting base like you do in DFW. You know, at the end of the day, as I said earlier, the big part of, of having success is acquiring talent. And when you have the best high school football players in the United States in your own backyard, how does it get any better than that? You know what I mean? And that's something that I think um, it's a great opportunity for us. There's obviously going to be an emphasis on recruiting local kids. You know, when you go around the country and you have a chance to see high school football like I have uh, in so many different states, you just realize how good it is here in Texas. You realize the commitment that the school districts have made to develop in those high school players. But the biggest thing is, is this is the best place in the country for coaches, high school coaches, without a doubt. I think it's the best group of high school coaches in DFW anywhere in the country. And so what happens when you recruit those players, you get players that know how to play football. You get players that know how to invest in a program and know how to sacrifice, know how to work in off season. All those things that are so critical to having success at the college level, those guys understand that because they've been coached, you know, by very, very effective high school coaches. So it's, um, I think this program has so much potential. You know, it's in the Big 12 Conference, which I think is, you know, going to do nothing but continue to get stronger and stronger, even with Texas and Oklahoma moving on. I mean, you look at BYU, you look at Cincinnati, you look at Houston, you look at Central Florida, those are good football teams. And so as we make that transition and, and blend to 14 and then, you know, go from there, it's going to be interesting to see how all that plays out. But uh, it's going to be a very competitive league. Um, but at the same time, we have some things here that, that other people don't. And you know, just being in the Metroplex and having a top-down commitment makes this such a special job. Hey, Coach. Uh, Colin Post, TCU 360. A criticism of you could be your coaching career at Cal. How, how would you tell fans you've grown as a coach since then? And how would you reassure them that you're ready to coach at the Power 5 program again? Yeah, you know, I think when I, when I went to Cal, I mean, Cal was, a, was kind of going to be a long-time rebuild. Um, you know, when I took the job, we, we knew what we were getting into. We knew it was going to be rough. Um, I think TCU's program is, is in much different shape maybe right now than that was at that time. Um, so, you know, it wasn't good in the beginning. You know, I think the thing that we did is we consistently got better. You know, we, we went one, five, eight wins and a bowl win, first pick in the draft, won a, won a, uh, a bowl game in this stadium against Air Force. Um, and so, 
you know, we continued to get better every single year. Um, knew it was going to be a, a bit of a rebuilding process. Um, but, you know, the numbers were the numbers. Uh, I was fortunate enough to get another opportunity at SMU. Um, and to me, it was much more of, uh, of uh, I knew much more what I was getting into. You know, and I think we had a lot of changes at Cal from the top down uh, and didn't have a ton of stability. Uh, and that's, again, one of the reasons I'm so attracted to TCU and was so excited about this job is because there's stability from the top down and a chance to work with people that, you know, I know and I trust uh, and really understand the value of college football. And so that's, uh, this, it's a very different situation. Coach right here, when you talk about recruiting, DF Jeremy Clark, 24-7 yep. Sports, when you talk about recruiting DFW in the entire state of Texas, how vital was it for you to personally land a guy like Rashad Samples and, and Brian Carrington and add those two onto staff? And can you talk a little bit about those two for yeah. people that may not know much about them? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so Rashad's a running back coach. Um, you know, I had an opportunity to hire Rashad from the University of Texas where he met Brian and the two of them worked together in recruiting there. Um, it's kind of a funny story. Rashad and I, I didn't know Rashad. I obviously knew Reggie, his father, was the head coach at Duncanville. And, and so we, uh, we had talked a little bit, and he told me Rashad was going to get into coaching. It was at Texas. And Rashad was in town to watch his uh, dad in a playoff game. And I, I called him, and I just said, you know, I'd like to go to lunch with you and meet you and maybe someday down the road have a chance to, to work together. About five minutes into to our lunch that day at Papa Do's, I, I still remember what he ordered. Uh, <laughs> about five minutes into that lunch that day, I said, look, I got to find a way to, to get this guy on my team. And we were fortunate that we had a coaching change in July of all times. We lost somebody and I was able to, to hire Rashad and, and he really hadn't looked back since. Um, it's been a real pleasure to get to know Brian. Uh, those two guys together are dynamic recruiters, uh, they're relationship builders. Um, you know, the thing that they do so well is they get to know kids and they get to know uh, what, what makes them tick. They get to know their families. Uh, and then what happens is there's a bond that takes place and there's a trust that gets established. And really, that's what recruiting is. It's all about relationships. It helps when you have a beautiful stadium. It helps when you have great facilities. It helps when you have a storied tradition. But really, it comes down to, to how well do you know somebody and how much can they trust you at the end of the day. And so I think, um, I think those two guys are, are some of the best at doing that. We're very fortunate to have them on our staff. And as you can see, I think with what's going on in the last 24 hours and what's going to continue to go on, I think that, that those guys are very effective in, in what they do. I just want to say this. I'm really excited about our entire staff. You know, those guys, we've got some, some really, really bright coaches, guys that have really bright futures. Um, you know, they're loyal. They're hardworking. They work well together. And, uh, and it's, a, it's a fantastic group. Hey, Sonny. Joseph Hoyt. Yeah, Dallas hey, Joe. Morning. Yep. Yeah, good to see you. Good to see um, you too, Joe. So the coaching carousel started earlier than it ever did, and your name was one of the first names thrown yep. on it. And then obviously the news about you coming to TCU breaks before the final game at SMU. Right. I'm kind of curious, as someone who you know, was a part of the earliest coaching carousel, what challenges and, and yeah, there to was, a certain extent how hard maybe were? Yeah, there was a lot. Um, you know, there was a lot. I think, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of unfortunate the way um, the, the coaching things started to happen. I mean, they started to happen early. Uh, you look at USC and LSU, I mean, those things happened right, really at the beginning of the season, and then others happened as well. Um, I certainly understand why. You know, I think that's part of college athletics is, you know, it's a very competitive industry. Um, you know, recruiting's very important. As, as I said earlier, these next two weeks are going to be vital to, uh, you know, to our success moving forward. And so what has to happen is, is the early signing period became very prevalent, then you know a lot of these timelines had to move up. And what happens when, when that occurs is you know you have a lot of rumors and a lot of things going on. And, and so sometimes they take on a life of their own. Um, and it was very, very difficult. I mean, it was difficult for me personally. It was very difficult for our players. Um, because at the end of the day, you know, it's all about the players. It really is. I mean, it's 100% about the players. And it was difficult for those guys to deal with. It, it's, it was hard at SMU. I mean, I. I Loved my time there. I loved our players. Uh, we had that bond that we talked about earlier. We believed in each other. We trusted each other. And that made this process very difficult. Hey, uh, Jeff Wilson with uh, Frogs Today. Um, 
you talked about recruiting your own players. Have you had a chance to talk to Zach Evans yet? I have. Yes, I have. We talked to him. Uh, I talked to him briefly, and then he met with several of our staff members last night. And, you know, um, it's, there'll be a recruitment that takes place, <laughs> you know. And, and just like anything else, I think, I think we need to have an opportunity to sit down with Zach and just get to know him a little bit. And at the end of the day, I want what's best for Zach. And if TCU is what's best for Zach, and I believe that it is, then, then I'm hoping that's what happens. And if he can find an opportunity that he thinks suits him better, you know, that's his prerogative. But, but I want to have an opportunity to sit with him, talk to him, get to know him, let, let build that relationship, get that trust, and, and hopefully at that point we'll see what happens. Uh, Coach, Jeremiah talked about how important the NIL is going forward. Can you just shed some light on your plan for TCU and, and how you plan to kind of make that part of the program? Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I think, you know, the college football landscape obviously has changed dramatically in the last 24 months. Um, you know, there's a lot of challenges um, that are there, but there's also a tremendous opportunity. You know, for, for us, the transfer portal um, you know, I view that as, as an opportunity, and I never really could understand why anybody viewed it any other way. Um, you know, as we said earlier, this is always about the young people. It's not about me. It's about young people going someplace, finding their way, and becoming successful, whether it's as a student, whether it's as a football player, or whether it's just in their personal development. Um, and so I never understood why we binded them someplace like we did. If somebody wasn't happy, their situation changed, they realized they made a mistake. You know, we made them pay for that mistake for four years. And now kids have an opportunity to, to make a mistake. We all do. Um, and, and, but for us, that's going to be an opportunity. You know, there's so many DFW kids that leave and go off to school to play in these big stadiums, sold out atmospheres. The problem is there's 359 days a year where they got to get up and go to that school even though they may not want to. You know, that stadium's great on Saturday. But those other 359 days aren't so great, away from their family, friends, people that care about them, people that are invested in their success. And so we have to embrace the transfer portal. I think it's a big opportunity for us here at TCU. Name, image, and likeness is also an opportunity as well. I think that you know, with the kind of support this program has, the ties to Fort Worth and the community, I think there's tremendous opportunity for us to give our players opportunities to, to earn money and to uh, to align with many of our donors so that when they're done playing football and their careers are over, you know, the money goes, but the relationship's still there. And, and I think that's so important. You know, one of the things that I'm really proud of is, is the Life After Ball program that we have here at TCU we're going to begin. And that's a program, a really a comprehensive program to, to get our players ready for, for their lives when football ends. Um, you know, the statistics are, are the statistics. Six percent of our players at TCU may play one game in the NFL, okay? One and a half percent will play, will have a career, will get a second contract. So what we have to do is cater to the 98 and a half percent that aren't going to play professional football for a living. So that when those young men are done with their football career, they're ready to enter the job force, and the workforce rather, and, and, and compete for, for jobs with other guys that have had an opportunity to do internships, that have had mentors. So I would ask all of you to get involved in this Life After Ball program. We'll be reaching out to you uh, in the donor community and to in supporters of TCU. We, we need you uh, to, to come and, and help our players and create opportunities for those guys. Same thing with the NIL opportunities. Sonny, Stephen Hawkins with the AP. You kind of answered the transfer portal, so I'll ask you something else. Um, the, you Where are you? I'm about, trying to find you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm over here. Sorry. Okay, good. Thank you. Yep. you. You talked a minute ago, obviously, when you started about defense has to be important about winning championships. But part of the reason the draw for you here by the people here was the offensive part of it. Just talk about combining those two, but that your mind is an offense and what you saw here at TCU while you were here, because Gary was so much of a defensive guy, but you were an offensive guy the year you were here. Yeah. Well, it was, it was a great education for me uh, just to work for a different head coach than I had in the past. Um, you know, I think there's a, mi a million different ways to win football games, you know, and I think the, the, the number one thing you have to do is you have to be flexible. You know, you have to look at your current players, your team. Every team's going to have strengths. Every team's going to have weaknesses. You know, the, there's going to be some years at TCU we have really good defensive players that have a lot of experience, um, and, and we have a very cohesive unit. We're very good on defense. 
The following year, you may, you may lose some guys. You may have some, some players move on. Uh, you may have some injuries, and you may have to figure out different ways to win. Um, but the thing that I know, and it proves true, people say it all the time, defense does win championships. Defense travels. Uh, all those things that you hear, those cliches, they're cliches because they're true. And so to really to, to acquire that, to become that kind of elite football program that we want, we've got to do that defensively. But obviously, you've got to be able to score, and especially in the Big 12. You have to be able to score consistently. You have to be able to figure out to utilize your personnel. You have to be willing to change and adapt uh, and, and try to stay ahead of the game. And I think that's one of the things that we take great pride in doing is making sure that we do everything we can to be on the cutting edge, whether it's defense, offense, or special teams. Uh, Coach, <clears throat> Mac Engel. Where are you, Mac? Okay, good. Yep. Mac Engel, Fort Worth Star-Telegram. Uh, in the last couple of years, as you've had more and more success, your name would always get linked to this job or that job. And there was this prevailing thought, especially in the last couple of months, that the job that Coach Dykes would, would like, if, it, if things worked out, was this one. Is that a fair statement? You know, it's interesting. I, I, you know, the job that I always wanted was the job that I had. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, I think that's the thing that you, you have to look at is, is that. You have to say, you know, look, opportunities present themselves, but I have to be present. I have to be where my feet are, and that's going to be my focus. Um, you know, when this job opened, obviously it was very, very attractive to me. You know, again, for, for the many reasons I talked about earlier, I just feel like this place has so much potential, um, so much consistency, so much leadership, so much investment, uh, an opportunity to, again, to, to go and recruit the best football players in the country uh, and compete in one of the great conferences in the country. So I think it's safe to say that, that certainly, you know, I viewed TCU from afar and saw the success that Coach Patterson had, had a chance to be here for a year, um, learned a lot from Gary, also learned a lot about the opportunities that are here, and this even it, it's, it exceeded my expectations when I was here. Um, and so, you know, when the job was coming open, I, I thought, you know, what, what a perfect landing spot for us. Um, you know, our, we really loved our time here in Fort Worth. Uh, we made a lot of friends that have, uh, will be lifelong friends. Um, so we just felt like this was the right place at the right time. Couldn't be more excited to be here. Hey, Sonny. Kevin Reynolds with The Daily Campus. Um, hey, Kevin. One of the things that you kind of did at SMU, building the you talked about recruiting, but just branding SMU as Dallas's team. I'm curious if you want to take a similar strategy here in, in TCU with how close yeah. this is. Yeah. Well, you know what? That's, uh, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I kind of stole that idea from what was already here. You know, that was one of the things that the year I was here I was so impressed with was the city of Fort Worth. You know, I, I think that it's been a process to, to get here, but this city loves TCU football. You know, we have a lot of friends that graduated from different schools, um, you know, that, that went to all these different places that have season tickets and come support TCU. Uh, and, and I think that was the thing, you know, to me that, that we had to do there at SMU was to try to, to, get, that, to get that done, to, for the city to, to try to, to buy in the level that Fort Worth had to TCU. But there's an incredible synergy between Fort Worth and this university. Um, it was abundant, abundantly obvious to me, you know, the purple, wear purple on Fridays, just all the things that I saw, the businesses that had signs supporting TCU in them. You know, I'd get my coffee in the morning and people were wearing purple and talking about the game. And, you know, I just thought what a, what a incredible, um, what an incredible support system that, that is here. Um, and, I, and I think that that's the, what universities are supposed to do. They're supposed to serve the community. And I always had that feeling that, that TCU got that, that it served the Fort Worth community, and the Fort Worth community responded to that and supported TCU. And, um, and so a lot of that stuff that we did at SMU was really came from, from, from that idea uh, and what I saw that existed here in Fort Worth. Thank you, Coach. Okay. Thank you, guys.